Okay, so these next few stories are going to talk about percentages. So let's see that first one that we just looked at. A large western state consists of 3,212 million acres of land. Notice they didn't put the zeros, they wrote the word million, didn't they? Okay. Approximately 69% of this land is federally owned. They actually want us to find the number of acres of land that are not federally owned. So again, good idea to write down the information nice and neat. And one piece of information was, we have a western state, right? Is that something we need to know? No, that's fluff. It just makes the story sound good, right? But the number of acres of land, number acres of land, by the way, that's in million, so we know how many units that is, and that is 3,212 million acres of land, right? Now, do you notice it says approximately 69% of this land? That means that 69% of that land right here, this amount of land, is federally owned. So, amount federally owned, that's 69%. And they want to know how much is not federally owned. Okay. You know, there's a couple different ways we can actually work out this story. The fact that they gave me a percentage of how much was federally owned will actually help me find the percentage of the amount of land not federally owned. Because the most I can have is how much? Most I can have is 100%. So if 69% is federally owned, then what's the percentage not federally owned? Good. The amount as a percentage not federally owned is, that's right, 31%. So this is 31%. That's not federally owned. So then the number of acres not federally owned, how do you think you're going to find it? Right. 31% of land, right? Of means what? Multiplication. And I can't use it with a percent sign, so I'm going to take this 31% written as a decimal and multiply it by the amount of land. And that'll give me amount not federally owned, won't it? Okay, so I'm going to get my calculator out. I'm sure you guys are you're getting your calculator out, and hopefully we'll agree on the number. Okay, I got a decimal. Did you? All right, so let's see. They ask us to write a decimal. It's fine for them to write a decimal, and they say to two decimal places is needed. So what I ended up with was 995.72 million acres that are not federally owned. Cool? Okay, hang in there. Got another percentage problem. Okay, so let's talk about that problem we just read. They're telling us the population of a country in 2018 and they want to know the population of the country in 2014, don't they? Okay, so let's get back to writing down our information nice and neat. So, the population in 2018. Whoops, put the 8 in there. And that was in millions. And again, they didn't write all the zeros. They wrote the word million instead. So, that was 82.4 million, wasn't it? And they also told us that this was an increase from 2014, wasn't it? Okay, so here's the deal. I know that they're looking for the population in 2014, and it's in millions, right? And I don't know what this is, do I? So I'm going to call it P. But the one thing I do know is this. There was an increase 
from 2014 to 2018. And the increase was 2.8%. So if there was an increase, should our population in 2014 be more or less than the one in 2018? Good, it should be less. My answer should be less because it said there was an increase from 2014, right? Okay, now, let's talk about this a second, right? I don't wanna look at the numbers right now. I wanna look at the, the logic. How are we logically gonna figure this out so we know how to set it up? Okay, so if I take the population in 2014, and add the increase to it, shouldn't that give me the population in 2018? Okay, good, so, so let's write that down. So, the population in 2014 plus the increase equals the population in 2018, right? Okay. Well, the population in 2014 we call P. And the population in 2018, they gave me is 82.4 million, didn't they? What I need to know is how do I figure out the increase? It increased from 2014 to 18 by 2.8%. All right, so let me sidetrack you a second. Say you went to the store and you were going to buy, I don't know, you're going to buy this great pair of shoes and they cost $50. And you decided not to buy them. And overnight, the store increased the price by 2%. You were going to buy a $50 pair of shoes. You didn't. And overnight, they increased it by 2%. How are you going to figure out the price of the shoe the next day? If it was 50 and they increased it by 2%, that means, good, they took 2% of the $50, right? And that was the amount of increase, wasn't it? Right? So to figure out the amount of increase, I need to take the population in 2014 and multiply it by the percent of the increase. Well, the population in 2014 we called P. The increase was 2.8%. So when you write 2.8% of the decimal, it looks like this, doesn't it? Times that P. Good? Okay. And now I have to add these like terms. Remember, there's a 1 in front of here. So you're adding one plus that decimal, which will give us 1.028. And then finally, you have to divide by that number, don't you? Okay, I'm getting my calculator. I know you're getting yours. Hopefully this is making sense to you in terms of this right here, the population in 2014 times the percent of the increase, right? Okay, so let's see. They said round to the nearest tenth. The tenth is how many decimal places? Good, one. So I got 80.2 because it was 0.15, so I had to round to two. So our population in 2014 was 80.2 million. Does this make sense? Here's the deal. Whenever we're increasing by a certain percentage or even decreasing by a certain percentage, that percentage has to get multiplied by whatever it is I'm talking about. Got it? Okay, hang in there. Got another story for us. All right, let's look at this last one. 
So we just read about a new television set being purchased for a common room in residence hall, whatever, A, B, whatever it is, okay? And they told us the amount that they paid, which included tax. And they told us the tax rate was 5%. And they want to know how much the TV cost actually prior to tax, right? Okay, so here's the thing. Let's write down the information we have. The information we have is the total price that was paid, correct? So the total price, and that total price was um, the original price plus tax. And that equaled $472.50, didn't it? And they told us the tax rate, and the tax rate was 5%. And they want to know the price before tax. So how much was it when it was sitting on the shelf at Costco or wherever they bought it from? And I don't know it. So I'm just going to call it P. So let me get rid of this question mark. And I'm going to call it P. P for price. Now, again, let's talk ourselves through this, okay? We found a TV set we wanted to buy. It's sitting on the shelf. We take it off the shelf, we move it over to the cash register, and they bring it up. So, and then they give us the total price, don't they? So think about it. That total price includes what? Good, it was the original price, right, of the TV, plus the tax they charged us equaled the uh, final price. That's a good way to phrase it. So the original price of the TV, I don't know. We just called it P. That tax, I'll be back to that tax. We know the final price. The final price was $472.50, wasn't it? Okay, so how do they figure out sales tax again? Good. They take the price of whatever, right? And they multiply it by the tax rate. Well, in our case, the price we called P because I don't know what the original price was. And the tax rate is 5%. Good, and 5% is 0 0.05, isn't it? So I have 0 0.05 times that P equals $472.50, correct? Okay, and now we get to solve. So there's a one in front of here. So I have 1.05p equals $472.50. You know what you have to do next as well as I. Yep, I'm getting my calculator out also. Got to make sure we both agree on our number. So I'm going to take 472.50 and divide it by the 1.05. What'd you guys get? Good, I got the same thing. $450. That was the original price of the TV as it was sitting on the shelf at whatever store they bought it at. Here's the deal. Remember, this part right here, this first line right here to me is the most important line after writing down the information they gave us because I'm talking it out in words. And when I can logically think it out in words, I know where all this stuff is going to end up in my equation. Cool? Okay, so you have fun with this stuff, and I'll catch y'all next.